I'm Susan Rose. My husband Keith, one of Amanda's you. parents. Oh, okay. We're celebrating her birthday all day. Yes. All right, we're live now. So good morning, and I'm not working. I guess I turned it off when I went over there. We're having a little bit of trouble with Facebook, which is normal. <laughs> uh, but it's good to have the live stream people joining in with us. And again, glad to have each and every one of you here. We're missing some today. We've got some guests with us. But you know what? We're here. God knows who, who would be here. He knew it in advance. And I'm just believing that he's going to bless us today for our efforts to be here. You know, I, I wonder sometimes, do we realize that when we put forth the effort, let's be really honest, there's sometimes we don't feel like being here. But we come anyway, and I believe God will bless you for those times. And I would, I'm not saying that to shame anybody as a home. We're so thankful for the technology that you can be involved with us. I want us to just go to the Lord in prayer. But before we do, uh, there's so much I'd love to say. I'm not going to take all the time. But I, I got to thinking this morning. Pardon me. I'm trying to figure out where I put my phone because I had this verse pulled up. The day of the 9-11 attacks, I, I can remember that day, probably every one of us remembers exactly where you were. I was getting my kids ready for school that morning, and I, I was trying to get them out of the house without letting them know everything that had happened. Uh, they were young at that time, and I didn't want to upset them. Well, little did I know that they had the TV set up at school, and they were going to see it all anyway. Um, after I got them to school, I came back home. And I was just sitting there dumbfounded, probably like most of us, and I just in time to see the second plane hit. And my mind went here. And I know when I say this, a lot of people are going to think that's an odd thought. Psalm 31 says, In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in righteousness. Bow down thy ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house for a house of defense save me for thou art my rock and my fortress therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me the reason my mind went there is I didn't know what to do I think we probably all that way we didn't know was there going to be a series of attacks we didn't know what was going to happen but here's where my mind went to that day within just moments my phone began ringing like many other people and people started saying can we come to the church they flooded to the church. We had several prayer meetings that day. Uh, I, we had only been in that town for less than a month, uh, moved into a new town to pastor, and they called me and asked me to lead a community prayer meeting. I was stunned, and I asked them why. This has always stood out. We were a small church, uh, probably less than a tenth of the size of most of the bigger churches in town. And I said, why did you call me? And they said something I will never forget. They said, you people know how to reach God. And I thought, now, there's something wrong with that statement. If you're saying that of all these other churches of bigger sizes and everything else, and I'm not trying to slam them, please don't misunderstand me. If when they really needed prayer, they came to the Pentecostal folks. That's true. That's true. I thought, there's something missing. Sometimes it's because we don't understand not been taught. I'm not trying to say we're better than anybody else. Please don't misunderstand me. But my point is this. If you know that there's a connection that you can go to that church and they can reach God, then shouldn't that be the church you're going to? Yeah. And I've never forgot that since that day. And again, I'm not trying to shame anybody else or anything like that. But it was like, what an amazing thing. We've been in town less than four weeks. Small church. It just been through a rough period, and yet they called and asked for that pastor to come and lead the community prayer meeting because you people know how to reach God. And I'm not, I don't care what the label on the door is. I don't care if it's Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, anything else. If you know that that place, those people can reach God, get there. Yes, don't amen. go to the place that has the fanciest show. Right. Go to the place where you know that they're in touch with God. Amen. That's my word of encouragement today. But you know what? The same God that was inclining his ear to us 21 years ago today, he's waiting for America to yes. do the same thing today. Yes. You know, I, I almost hate to say this, but I have prayed many, many times. I said, Lord, I don't want to see another terrorist attack. But whatever it takes... 
to bring America back to a place of repentance before you, let it be. Because we need God in America again. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord. We're going to do a song we've not done here before. We've sang, well, a couple of these songs we've not sang here before, but Libby and I have sang them many years ago. So don't pay attention to how we do them. We ran through them once this morning, and we're going to do the best we can. But you know what? It's not about talent. It's about giving God praise. So worship him with us. Is in you, Lord, my strength. Is in you, Lord, my hope. Is in you, Lord, in you. It's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. Is in you, Lord, my hope. Is in you, Lord, in you. It's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. bear with me this morning. My mind is off on all these different tangents. When I say this, some people will say, oh, pastor listens to secular music. I heard somebody say the other day, oh, you shouldn't be listening to that stuff. Listen, a very wise man told me 30 some odd years ago, always keep in touch with what the younger generation is listening to. It's not just for that. I like it. I'm just being real. And Believe it or not, I like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> and there's a song, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me right now, but he sang a song that is a love song. And every time I hear it, I hear a love song to Jesus. And he says in that song, that why don't we just start with Sunday? And so while we're at it, all the other days of the week too. Mm -hmm. That's what the Christian people need to learn. A lot of people, their life is theirs except for Sunday. God wants every other yes. day, too. Let's Amen. give him all of our days. Amen. Let's worship him. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm trying to move on because I have a long sermon today. I'm going to talk <laughs> as fast as I can. I told my wife I tried to whittle it down and whittle it down, and I just couldn't. So I'm going to talk very fast today. <laughs> Has he made you glad? So many people struggle with trying to find peace and happiness. Jesus Christ can make you glad. Trust him at all times, even in my 
my worst days. He has delivered me from all fear. He has set my feet upon a
We thank you, Lord God. We give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. I was thinking as we were singing, I shared this with somebody a while ago, but yesterday my wife and I had an opportunity, somebody we had not seen in many, many years ago. How ironically, somebody we used to pastor in that church I was just talking about was happened to be in town, and so we got together with her and was having lunch. While we were there, another young lady walked over to me, and I'm embarrassed to admit it, I didn't recognize her. I've known her since she was just a young kid in junior high school, and just drew a blank. Couldn't think of her name. The neat thing about it is a little bit later on, I sent her a message back on Facebook to tell her I was so sorry and so embarrassed I couldn't think of her name. And she told me, she said, it's okay. And here's the part that was so cool of it. Nobody here knows the other my wife who it was, so it'll be okay. She said, I'm not proud of where I've been recently. And she said, I've fallen off the wagon. And she said, I've been sober for a week. And she said, I was just asking God and say, or praying to God and asking him on the way to the restaurant. I need a sign. I need to know you're with me because I'm struggling right now. And she said, I walked in and there you were. And she said, you were my sign. She said, God told me I need to get plugged back in into your life and let you be a help to me like you always were before. I just said a few minutes ago, even on your worst days, yesterday was a rotten day. I'm just being honest. It was awful. I didn't feel good. Mentally, I was out there because I had all kinds of stuff going on, family issues with family far away and just all kinds of junk going on. And I was feeling, yeah. And in a moment like that, God used just my being there to touch somebody. And you need to recognize that on our worst days, if we will submit ourselves to God, he'll use you. Right. And you may not even know it. Amen? Amen. 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 One more song. Let's worship him today. Drawing close to him. <laughs> I need 
say that one time. Lord, I need you more than ever before. Hallelujah. Bear with me just a minute. We're not going to have to do these transitions much longer. We have the piano. If you, I know you can't see it online yet, but to my left, there's a piano over here. And hopefully within the next week or so, we'll have all the moving done and we'll be ready to go. And I am looking forward to it. You know, I thank God that he's given us the technology to use what we have. But I'm tired of canned music. I'm tired of being restricted to it, and I'm ready to worship the Lord freely. I want to share a word with you today that uh, if you've been on Facebook, you've probably seen me talking. It's time to eat the sweet stuff, and believers eat the honey. My wife knew exactly where I was talking about, but if you know, don't know the story, it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 14. I'm not going to read the entire thing for time's sake. As I said, I already have a very long message but in this 14th chapter, Israel has been under siege by the Philistines. It seems like that is a reoccurring thing over and over that the Philistines come. And it's been a tough battle. Uh, they have been trapped, if you will, and not been able to get out and move. And Saul is very discouraged and very frightened. Unbeknownst to Saul, Jonathan, his son, and his armor bearer, snuck out of camp, believing that God was going to give them victory. I won't go into all the details, but they went out, and as they literally crawled out of a hole, the Philistines saw them, and they thought, here comes the children of Israel, and fear struck the Philistines. And you know, God was in the mix here, and just two men began to chase down the army of the Philistines and killed at least 20 that first battle there. And it went on. I don't have time to go into all the details, but it was a long, extensive attack that the children of Israel have been under. And I wanted to get to this place. Saul, as I told you, was distressed. I'll go down to verse number 24 if you have your Bibles open. 1 Samuel 14, 24. And it says, And all the men of Israel were distressed that day. Why? I want you to get this. Not because the Philistines were out there, but they were distressed, for Paul had placed the people under an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening before I have taken vengeance upon my enemies. Nobody can eat. Nobody can give the body the nourishment that they need. What did he do? He instilled fear in his people. He restricted them. Let's continue on. Now all the people of the land had come to a forest and there was honey on the ground. And when the people had come into the woods... There was the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard his father charge the people with the oath. Therefore he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped in the honeycomb and put his hand into his mouth, and his countenance was brightened. 
<clears throat> Pardon me. Then one of the people said, Your father has strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats food this day. And the people were faint. We might say the people were weak. But Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Who's his father? He's the king. And he says, My father has troubled the land. Now look, my countenance has brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For now would there not have been a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? Won't you just bow your heads with me and pray once? <clears throat> Father, we thank you for another opportunity to open your word. And Lord, I pray especially today that somebody would see the key to their deliverance, the key to their freedom. And Father, that, Lord, so many times we listen to the decrees of man and to the voices of those around us, and we don't even recognize the blessings that you have laid right before us. And Father, I just want to thank you, and I want to give you all the praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One of the things about this passage that it doesn't expressly say this, how long this has been going on. If I believe it was probably just that day, but it could have been longer that Saul had said they couldn't eat. But it, even that day, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to be real honest. This morning I got up, I didn't eat breakfast. I'm fine. Now, I promise you in about an hour and a half, I'm going to be ready to chow down. <laughs> Why? Because my stomach is letting me know it's time to eat. And my body's going to begin to get weary. My body is such that if I don't eat in a certain period of time, I begin to get terrible headaches. I don't know how much time has gone on here, but it's been a lengthy time because it says the people were faint or weak. They've not had anything to eat. Jonathan just decided, what's wrong with you? There's honey here. Now, I want you to get this picture. I, I hope that through this story, somebody begins to get a revelation today. You know, revelation... The book of Revelation, let's talk about that just a minute. People act like it's some big mysterious book. Revelation means to take the cover off. Right. God's not trying to hide anything from anybody. So when he wants to give you Revelation, whether it's through the book of Revelations or any other way, it's to take the cover off and help you to see what is before you. I'm praying somebody gets a revelation today that it is not right for God's children to be walking in fear. Right, amen. It is not right for God's amen. children to be doing amen. without. Amen. It is not right for us to accept the fact, well, we're just going to have to put up with it. It's just the way it is. It's not right. The very moment that Jonathan made a decision to do something crazy, he's defying his father, who's the king. Now, he didn't know that at that time, but even after he was told, he didn't back down and tell, oh, you better not eat. He said, my father, I'm going to give you the Garrett translation, my father is speaking foolishness. Mm -hmm. You're hungry. You're weak. Eat. Mm -hmm. Take and eat. That's true. Now let me go backwards about two and a half years. The government said, you can't go to church. Come on. Oh, just be kind and do it for 14 days to slow the curve. I'm talking primarily to those people right now. Because a lot of people have said to me over and over, and I, listen, I love you. I'm not trying to be harsh, but I'm trying to give you some revelation. The government said, well, we got to be safe. we got to separate. And right. I, I know a particular church where a friend of mine, dear friend of mine, pastored up till just last week. He resigned and retired last week, but they had never opened their doors since, what was that, March of two years ago? Right. They remained on camera. Oh, yeah. And now it's nice to have a camera, but guess what? That's not the same as being in God's house Amen. and worshiping Amen. with God's people. Right. And a lot of people have been struck down with fear because the king told us not to. Amen. Come on. Now, I'm not trying to get political today. I'm just telling you the way it is because I don't care if it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, whoever said it is foolish. Amen. Amen. Right. And we need to understand that God has given his people a charge. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will keep you. I will give you strength. And he says, if you will eat the word of his, his word, I mean the, the bread of life, he will nourish everything you have need of. But we have 
sat down. Even though the opportunity is right there, churches are open. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to worship is there. But if statistics are correct, and that's all I had to go by, they're telling us that less than 40% of all the people who attended church prior to the COVID situation are in church today. Wow. Let that sink in. Here's the image I want you to get. When they walked into the woods, they did not look up into the trees and see the honey. Where was it? It was on the ground. How many know bees don't make honey on the ground? God had already prepared it for them. Wow. It was there for them to take. All they had to do is reach out their hand, just like Jonathan did with his spear, and take the honey. It was theirs. But out of fear of what the king had said, they did not eat. And they remained weak. The body of Christ is weak today. I hate to say it. But it's the truth. The body of Christ is weak because we've not been eating. We've not been eating the honey. That's true. Let me get to where I want to go with this. Last week in my message, we weren't here, but I broadcast the message and I talked about in it how that we need a Holy Ghost breakthrough in America. Come on. We need God to break. Listen, I don't care if you're not Pentecostal. It don't matter. We all have the same Holy Ghost. Right. If you are saved, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. Amen. Right. Amen. You need to understand that. But it can the Holy Ghost can be in you and not operating through you. Right. Right. Here's the message I've got for somebody today. Nothing is going to change till you get fed up. Come on. And I'm not just talking about the government. Get your mind off of that aspect of it, because it could be any number of things today. So who am I talking to? I'm talking to people who are need to get fed up about being broke all the time. I'm not a name it, claim it, blab it, grab it type preacher, but I do believe God's children are called to be blessed. Yes. I do believe that we are to walk in health. I do believe that God wants to bless his people. You may be the only one of 600. Remember there was all these troops around there and Jonathan is the only one. You may be the only one believing. And let's just say it the way it is. Out of fear, when we're by ourselves, we'll think, well, nobody else is doing it. So maybe I shouldn't do it. I'll just kind of hold back. But you know what? Moses was one man. And look what Moses was able to accomplish with God on his side. Elijah was one man. Right. But look what he was able to accomplish with God. Gideon was one man. And God even went on his army down smaller. David was one man. If you want to get down to it, Jesus was one man. But he's changed the face of history. God is looking for one man or one woman who will stand up and say, enough of this. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of being pushed into these situations. You may be finding yourself in a place like Jonathan was. If you go back and read that whole story, I didn't have time to go through it right now. Saul has hunkered down his army, if you will, not allowing them to go out. Fear has gripped him. Of, he's afraid of the Philistines. And Jonathan, talking to his aides, says, I've had it. I'm not going to put up with this. And two men, just two, crawled out of camp. They weren't even noticed that they'd left the camp. Matter of fact, <clears throat> when Saul begins to see the armies of Philistine running, he tells them, muster the troops. In other words, count them. Find out who's left us. He didn't even know who's gone. No, but my point is this. Nobody may even recognize that you've done something. Come on. It's just God is looking for somebody that will give him glory. Yeah. And will say, I've had enough. God's children don't need to live this way. What I'm trying to say, is, and I believe this as sure as I'm standing here, God is saying to somebody right now that it's time to open your mouth. And give God praise. Now praise to us is always what we do in the church house. We always think about praise being whenever the music's playing just right. You know, when there's a few in number like we are today, it's a lot harder to praise. But you know, that's a good thing. But do you know praise is the words that come out of your mouth? Right. Praise is when we begin to speak prophetically and begin to say, you know what? I may be down, but I'm coming out. 
Yeah. I may have been beaten down in the last couple of years, but I'm coming out of this. I may have been fighting illness, but I'm coming out. I may be battling depression, but I'm coming out. I may be battling drug addiction, but I'm coming out. Begin to speak to that situation. Jesus said, speak to your mountain and tell it to be moved. But we sit back waiting for somebody else to speak. Come on. Come on now. It's time to say I'm coming out of poverty. I'm coming out of the stress of my home being ripped up apart. I'm tired of my children being disobedient. We can go on and on, but I know Joseph. Joseph is one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament. Don't have time to go into his whole story. Most of you know that story, but if you know, he was the youngest son there at that time, or the second youngest. But he was the favorite of his father. His father made him a special coat and his brothers hated him so they took him and threw him into a pit. But guess what? He didn't stay in a pit. You may say, oh, but yeah, he came out of there and they sold him as a slave. But guess what? He didn't stay a slave. No, he went from there to prison. But guess what? He didn't stay in prison. He was there for a while, 13 years, as a matter of fact, at least. But where'd he end up? In the palace. My point is, you may have to go through steps. You may have to go through some different stories, let me put it that way, to get there. Let's, let's shift gears. What about the three Hebrew boys? We all know about the celebration at the end, but guess what? They were arrested, and they were thrown into the furnace. But they didn't stay there. Right. Daniel was thrown into a lion's den, but he didn't stay there. He came out and became... One of the most powerful men throughout the Old Testament. See, I, I don't know what is pressing in on you, but let me just say it this way. Whatever is causing you stress and heartbreak and lack and grief is also grieving the heart of God. Right. And many people miss this. God will never step into your situation until you invite him in. Right. If you don't speak out, God will never force himself upon you. He will never force his will upon you. The Bible even tells us many of the afflictions of the righteous. We're going to go through some rough times, but we're not going to stay there. Amen. See, I really believe with all my heart, and I'm not just talking to this church. I'm believing that God is speaking to the body of Christ, especially here in America, but around the world. I've talked with friends in England and Scotland and different places and they're fighting the same thing and several friends that I have in Australia If you don't know what's happening in Australia, you need to clue in they have been horrible to their people there But they're all saying the same thing God's getting ready to deliver us But God won't deliver anybody until we speak Right until we begin to act and do what he's told us to do We've got to decide that it's time to put your troubles under your feet Amen. See, you, you're getting ready to come out from what's been on top of you. It's going to go under your feet. But you've got to speak to it. You've got to be willing to confront the enemy. Let's just face it. Most people today do not like confrontation. It's true. And they especially don't like confronting the devil. I've had, people, I've had church members over the years say, why do you always want to mess with the devil? You just do that. You agitate him. We're called to do that. <laughs> right. That's our job. Listen, if you don't agitate him, he's going to agitate you. That's true. Yep. That's true. He is going to have you right where you want to, where he wants you, and you won't even realize he's got you there. Right. You got to decide. I'm ready to bruise his head. My, where I came up, we would say, "Are you ready to bust a grape? <laughs> ready to hit somebody in the head? It's time to bust a grape with the devil. Tell him I'm not going to put up with this." any longer. Jesus told us that we will tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. But it will never happen as long as you're sitting waiting for... I'm just going to say that, and I think we Pentecostals are the absolute worst when it comes to this. We think we got to have the evangelist or we got to have the prophet come to the church and him call us out and him tell us what's going to happen and then we'll act. Come on. But God has given you all the word you need in the Bible. That's right. If you just begin to understand what the Bible says, begin to speak it out and speak those promises as yours. Every promise in the book is yours. 
Amen. But until you speak them, it's not going to happen. I've told this story several times over the years. I don't even know if it's true or if somebody made it up, but I'm going to tell you the way I know it. That there was a guy who always wanted to go on a cruise ship, and he scrimped and he saved. He got enough money that he bought one of the tickets that was in the lowest level of the ship. And he would come up the stairway and he was looking into the dining room and he saw the party going on and he went down to the other end and there was a formal dinner with a dance going on. And one of the pursers on the ship saw him and said, why don't you go in and enjoy yourself? And he said, I can't. I just have one of the cheap tickets. And he said, what you don't understand is when you bought that ticket, it gave you all authority to go anywhere on this ship. And every blessing of this ship belongs to you. Child of God, I want to tell you, every blessing yes. in the book has already been paid Amen. for. When Jesus died on the cross, it Amen. doesn't matter if you're rich or yes. poor or black or white yes. or yellow or any color in between. It is yours. But if you don't claim it, you'll be like that guy standing in the stairwell sneaking a peek Come on. at somebody else's blessing. Come on. When it's yours. Let me get where I need to go. I believe... And I, I, I almost hate saying this. Whenever I say this, I, I, I hesitate because I realize I'm nothing. But I was here in the church a few days ago. And I was laying right there in that row of chairs. And I began praying. I said, Lord, what is it going to take? And I kept hearing this word. I've heard others say it, but I heard it so clearly, suddenly. And I just began to walk back and forth in the air. I said, what, what, what do you mean suddenly? I know what suddenly means. But I heard God say, suddenly, addictions are going to break. Hallelujah. Suddenly, marriages are going to be restored. Yes. Suddenly, the property that you've been trying to sell is going to sell, and the house you want is going to be yours. Now, now you're sounding like one of those guys naming and claiming. I'm just telling you what God said. There's people that have been struggling just to get by. Let me just speak on that one because I think it's hitting somebody right now. My wife can tell you she's right here close enough she can amen. We had a house in southern Illinois that we tried to sell for, what, three years? Am I correct? I At least two and a half years, maybe three. Could not sell that house. We moved to Galesburg. Tried to buy a house, but we are still trying to sell a house. It wasn't easy to get a loan. And I kid you not, within a week, six days, one house sold and we bought the other. That's God. Yes. He are. did not allow us to sell that house before because if we did, we would have bought a house over in Lincoln, Illinois. God knew that that was just a place of holding. I don't have time to go into a whole long story, but when we went there, a man prophesied over both of us. We didn't understand it at all then, but we knew it was God. He said to us, God has you in a place of holding. He kept doing his hands like this. He said, you're in a place of holding. And he said, but get ready because a baby is getting ready to be born. Yeah. We had no idea what was happening, but all of a sudden, within a period of weeks, we were no longer in Lincoln and we were here. The house sold. We bought a house here because in God's timing, suddenly happened. Yes, amen. You just have to put it in his hands. Suddenly. The financial burden that you've been fighting, it's going to be lifted. Yes. Suddenly, that wayward child is going to come home. Come on. You, you've been praying about it. You've been agonizing over it. God is saying, get ready because I'm getting ready to do some suddenlies. And I'm not just talking to this church. I believe God is saying, I've been sitting back waiting for the church to speak out. I'm ready to move. Will you speak to your mountains? Come on. I, I keep hearing this. There's, I think I know who it is, but I don't know if it's yours. I'm not going to say it. You've been praying for that son. God is getting ready to put a hook in their jaw. Hmm. And they're, they're not even going to know what happened. They're just going to be jerked out of one situation into another. God is getting ready to do something miraculous. Get ready and thank him for it before it happens. Yes. He's getting ready to do it. Oh, help me, Lord. I need to get where I want to go, but he's not letting me yet. I love cherries. 
My wife can tell you probably my, I, if you asked me, I would not tell you this. But when I really stop and think about it and you give me my choices, my absolute favorite fruit is a cherry. I'll do all kinds of stuff. And she, as a surprise, she'll bring me cherries home all the time. The other day, I was sitting eating cherries. I didn't realize I'd eaten the whole bowl. <laughs> this is gross, but I was putting the pits back in the bowl. <laughs> It was just me eating them, so it's okay. But guess what happened to me? I reached over to get another cherry. And it was nothing but pits. And God spoke to me. He said, a lot of my people have only been getting the pits. Hmm. And it's time for you to eat the sweet stuff. That's where I got that phrase. Hallelujah. You've been getting the pits, and you, you've gotten to the place. You've just accepted it. Well, I... I I've had people say it to me. I just love watching other people be blessed. You have bought into a lie. Come on. God wants to bless you. He don't want you to just eat. Listen, I love seeing somebody else blessed. I love to just sit back and laugh at God's goodness. But that's not all he has in store for you. Right. God is saying it's time for you to stop getting the pits and understand that it, the sweet stuff belongs to you. Amen. I'm hearing this in my spirit right now. It's what I'm struggling with. Somebody hearing me, you're saying, I'm not going through any of that. I, I, everything's been going okay for me. I'm happy just the way it is. Well, praise God, that's great for you. But what about the rest of the people? That's true. Right. We need to be praying for them. Right. We Amen. need to be speaking God's goodness into their lives. You know, so many people that sit around and they think everybody else gets the goodness. I think I said this a few weeks ago, and I got a really nasty message through our website. That's okay. They can get ready to send it again. <laughs> I don't care how much you like the song. It's anti-Bible. I hate the songs. It's just give me a cabin on the other side of glory. God did not promise any one of us a cabin. No, he didn't. Right. No, he didn't. You can settle for a cabin if that's what you choose, but he said, I got a mansion. Right. Waiting for me. Right. He said, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Oh, I don't need all that. You're, you bought into a lie. And there's a lot of Christian people in this life. You bought into a lie. God is wanting to bless us, not just to bless you, so that you can bless somebody else. Amen. And you right. have not blessed somebody else because you said, I'm happy. Come on. I'm good enough. Come and on. I know you mean well, but you don't understand that if you don't allow God to bless you, then somebody else is not receiving the blessing that was supposed to be blessed through you. That's Amen. Right. Let right. God bless you. Let him be the judge of all this stuff. Now, I know that sitting in this room and online especially, with that many people listening, I'm probably talking to somebody who says, you just don't know where I come from. Some of you grown up in very abusive homes. Some of you sexually were abused, physically were abused. Financially, it was not good in your household. Life has been the pits. Right. And you've accepted the pits. God said to tell you, those of you who have been in that situation, it's time to eat the sweet stuff. Amen. It's your turn. It's time to exchange beauty for ashes. It's time to let go of the cursings of your life and be blessed. He's getting ready to take your bitterness and turn it into betterness. Yes. He's hallelujah. getting ready to take the pain and give you peace. Yes. But you got to let him. Amen. My cousin, I, I, my cousin Lou and I are just dear, dear friends. We grew up together. She's only about five months older than me. Not even that. We were talking, we do the Bible study on Thursday nights online, and after we're done with the study, we generally shut off the recording and we talk because they're out in Arizona. We don't get to see each other very often. She said to me the other day, she said, you know, Daryl, says, I've come to understand she grew up in the same church I did. And not just about that church, it's church in whole, as a whole. She said, nobody ever taught people how to receive. Right. And I've, I've thought about that ever since Thursday. She's exactly right. People have told us, oh, just be humble. No, listen, you can be humble and still receive. Right, right. right. 
And I'm just being as honest as I can. My wife's right there. She can amen real loud. I'll give you the shirt off my back. Right. I'll buy you a meal. I'll, I'll do all kinds of stuff. But when you try to give to me, I struggle. God's helping me in that area because I've come to understand that I'm cheating somebody else out of their blessing. That's right. right. That's right. But it, it takes work. So I'm, I'm not condemning anybody when I say this. I'm telling you, you need to learn how to receive. God has blessings for you. God has promises that are yours. And don't if you sit back and say, I don't need it, you're saying, God, no thanks, Lord. Come on. I don't want what you prepared for me. I don't want the things that Jesus bore the stripes on his back for. Think about it. God has given all these promises and all these blessings, and we say, I don't need it. Come on. That's religion. Right. Religion gets us to the place that we think, I, I, I can just bear this cross for Jesus. But that's not the cross he wants you to bear. Oh, there's a price to pay, but he's got blessings for you. Somebody needs to say this. You don't have to say it out loud. You can if you want to. But some of you need to just begin to tell yourself, it's a new day. Yes. This is a new day. It's time for some things to change. You, you need to understand that there is a new beginning, a new chapter in your life where God says, I'm going to bless you. As Jonathan and his armor bearer snuck out of that camp, they did it in faith. Jonathan told his armor bearer to come on. God has given them under our hands. Right. Two people against the whole army. I think about Jonathan, but I think about his armor bearer. We don't even know his name. Come on. But what faith to just say, okay, I'm with you. Let's go. So there's some people that need to get together with other members of the body of Christ and say, you know what? You and me, we got some faith. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put some devils to flight. Amen. We're going to stand up and do what God's told us to do. You need to begin to say it out loud. Lord, I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know your promises are going to come true. Amen. Let me get back to that honey. It was laying on the ground. Again, no need to climb a tree. They didn't even have to fight the bees. Right. Read it again. There's not a mention right. of a bee there. Mm -hmm. The honeycomb. And it's not just one. Read it. It says it was all over the place. It was just waiting on them. Right. I've read that story I don't know how many times in my life. And just this last week as I was reading it, I thought, Lord, there's America. God's blessings are all around us waiting right. to happen. Right. But we got to pick it up. Right. People say, well, I don't want to make a scene. And we're supposed to be subject to those that are over us. Not when they violate God's word. Amen. Amen. They didn't have to climb a tree to get the honeycomb. Let me just tell you something. Jesus already climbed the tree for you. Right. He yes, hung he on the cross. Yes, and he did. when he did, the honey was made reachable yes. for all of us. And all we got to do is reach out and take it. You need healing in your body. Say, Lord, by your stripes, I am healed. And I claim my healing now. In the name of Jesus. You need to say that. You may be fighting trouble in your mind. Lord, your word says that you will keep our mind in perfect peace if, our, if we're stayed completely on you. So, Lord, help me to focus my attention on you and on your word. And I'm believing for your peace to come into my mind. Your finances may be a wreck. Lord, I give my finances to you. Some of you literally need to take your purse or your billfold or your checkbook and you need to lay it on an altar and I'm not saying in the church make an altar in your home and lay it there and say Lord this is yours yes. everything I have belongs to you and as you submit yes. it to him watch what he will do in your life amen deliverance from every bondage I keep hearing it so much and it's not just because of the conversation we had I've heard it from the time I got here I, I've prayed since I've been in this community 18 plus years now it grieves me. If you, those who don't know, you're looking, at, and I'm going to say a word that they normally say, don't you say that. I am a former addict. Yes. They say, oh, you're always an addict. No, I am a former addict. Come I don't on. do those things anymore. God took that from me. But it grieves me when I drive down the street and I see somebody laying up against a building on Main Street so strung out and people walking right on by. Right. And I'm not saying that harshly about the people walking by. It's become normal. 
Right. I'm tired of hearing another shooting taking place in town, another drive-by, people afraid to go out. I'm tired of that stuff. It's time that God's people begin to bind together. I'm telling you, every time I go out there and do drive through prayer, whether it's here or, or over on Farnham or wherever we happen to be, I keep praying, Lord, this is your city. This city was birthed uh, by a group of men who came here to establish a place to train people as missionaries of Jesus Christ. This is your city, and we're taking it back in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. But if people don't begin to bind together and pray with me, it's not going to happen. That's right. God's people, people say, well, it's too late for Galesburg. Then it is. Come on. People say it's too late for America. Then it is. Come on. If you give up and you don't speak and take authority over those things, do you understand? God has given us the keys to the kingdom. That's right. That's right. But if you leave the keys in the back seat of the car, they're of no use. Right. Come on. That's true. You got to get them and use them. It's time for you to reach out and take some honey. It's right. time to not get it, just get it. You got to eat it. Right. Notice what Jonathan said. As soon as he put just a little bit in his mouth and they began to say, oh, don't do that. He says, look how my countenance has changed. Mm -hmm. I even look different. Right. I feel different. And what would have happened if other people would have done this? Surely more of the enemy would have been destroyed today. That's true. Right. What would happen if more of God's people would just get crazy like this crazy preacher? And begin to say, Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. And I'm believing, Lord, that you've got something much greater for us. My, my dear friend, you got to meet Jack about a month and a half ago now. He came in and joined us one Sunday morning. If you know Jack, he's got two things he's known for. You ask him how he is, simply marvelous. And then you ask him one more question. And the, depending on how you phrase it, the, the response is usually this. The devil's a liar. Come on. Because only Jack screams it. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's a liar. Some of you need to understand. If the devil is speaking it to you, it's a lie. Right. If he says, I'm going to destroy your family, then you go do the opposite because you know he's lying. Come he on. can't destroy your family unless we accept it. Come on. Hello. Right. He can't destroy your health unless you accept it. Right. He can't destroy your finances unless you just hand them over to him. Right. It's time to take some authority over things in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. The devil is a liar. And I came to tell somebody today the curse over your life is broken. Yes. I, I, I'm sick and tired of I, I Just standing in this building a couple of months back now while I was working on the building just before. I, we may have had one service. didn't really matter. In early days in this building, somebody walked in one day and they said to me, well, you don't understand. My life and my family's life has been cursed. And I said, do you know Jesus Christ? Oh, yes, I do. I said, then why are you living under a curse? Come on. Because you're not cursed unless you believe you're cursed. That's right. True. That's true. Every curse has been broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. The devil is a liar. Amen. Now, let me give you scripture. It's one thing for a pastor to stand here and say it. Let me give you a Bible for it. It is found in Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of spirit through faith. Do you get what he just said? Jesus took every one of those curses upon himself. Right. And you and I are not cursed any longer. Quit saying you're cursed. You pronounce a curse upon yourself. Well, I'm just cursed. Well, you just did it. Stop it. Well, I'm just destined to always be poor. You're cursing yourself. Come on. I'm just destined to fight this illness the rest of my life. Quit cursing yourself. Come on. Begin to say, God is my healer. My yeah. healing was paid for on the stripes on Jesus' back. I was set free from every curse when Jesus took that curse upon himself and began to speak the blessings of God in your life. It is already paid for, just like the honey already out of the tree. Amen. Start eating the honey. Yes. Let me just ask somebody real quickly. What's stopping you from eating the honey? I'm not talking literal. I've been around long enough that I've heard it all. 
And it usually is begins here. I just don't deserve it. Guess what? You're right. Amen. Not a one of us deserves it. Amen. Jesus didn't tell us to deserve it. He said to receive. Amen. A gift. A gift is freely given, but until you freely receive it, <coughs> pardon me. I watched this happen not too awfully long ago. Somebody that I know went out of their way to get a special gift for somebody that they care about. Was so excited. Gave them that gift. It was wrapped up. They gave it to them. They tossed it aside. I don't have time for it. It just broke that guy's heart. That's what we do to God. Because God has given us every gift. Every good and perfect gift. It, it belongs to you. A lot of people say, I don't have time for it. Maybe when I get everything figured out, maybe when I have more time, do I deserve it? No. Are you worthy? No. And here's the, the, another one I hear all the time. Well, they need it more than I do. Who are you? God's word says he is no respecter of persons. If God says every promise is yours, don't you give away that promise. The reason you're not blessed is because it's not because of the devil. It's because of you speaking those words out of your mouth. Well, I don't need it. You know, somebody else needs it worse. I, I can get by right here where I am. It's not based on your worthiness. It's based on his worthiness. It's not based on how good you are. It's based on how good he is. It's not based on your righteousness. He is our righteousness. In other words... If you let people label you or you label yourself, they define you. And they steal your identity. And your identity, whether you realize it or not, is a joint heir with Jesus Christ. It's yours. And I came to tell somebody today, you are somebody. You do deserve this because God said you deserve this. Not because of our works, but because of Jesus' works. Do you understand? You are the apple of his eye. Let that sink in. God doesn't look at you, well, there's that knuckle-headed Daryl again. No, he said, that is my son. That's my child. And I, I, I don't know what God's like, but I kind of imagine myself that he looks down at us and we always think, oh, he's so disappointed. He said, no, look at him. They fell, but they got up. Watched my grandbaby on the tape yesterday. Well, don't have time to tell you the whole long thing, but she turned one the other day and we bought her a little trike bike thing and mom decided she wear, needed to wear a helmet. But can you imagine trying to put a helmet on a one-year-old? You get that image. She's, no, 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 no. And she's pushing this thing off and they finally wrestled her down onto the ground and she gets back up and she's got the helmet on. As soon as she got on that bike, that helmet came off. And I thought, I'm telling you, God's just been speaking to me. I saw her throw that helmet off and I said, there's people in the church who need to throw off that helmet. Because that helmet is holding you back. I don't have time to give you that whole story, but you need to know that helmet was way too big for that one-year-old baby. Some of you are trying to carry things that are too big for you to carry. Right. And God said, quit trying to wear somebody else's armor. Remember what they did to David? Mm -hmm. You're trying to wear somebody else's armor. You're trying to prove yourself as, like you're as good as them. God never asked for that. He just wants you as you are. Right. Amen. It took me a long time to realize. I shared this a few weeks ago. I won't go into great detail. But when I first got saved, now I had hair down to here. I won't go. You, you just imagine, I've been on drugs for many, many years. But as soon as I got saved, I cut all that hair off. I got me a slip back preacher hairdo. <laughs> Went down, got me a three-piece suit. Got rid of my tinted glasses because only drug addicts wore those tinted glasses. You know that. As I tried to become what everybody else wanted me to be, at least I thought that's what they wanted me to be. And I finally come to realize... God didn't call another Jimmy Swaggart. Right. God called me. Right. And all my 
craziness, wearing my blue jeans and cut off shorts and sandals. That's who God called. He didn't call me to go out and imitate somebody else. And he didn't do that with you either. Amen. Quit trying to think you've got to be a cookie cutter Christian. Right. Like God's not up there stamping them out. There's a Christian. There's a Christian. There's a Christian. There's a Christian. No, he called you. Amen. And what he wants to do is take what you have, even your failures, and if we'll submit it in those to him, he will use them for his glory. Amen. Everything the devil meant for harm, he will turn around for good. Let me help somebody with something. Hebrews 10, 17. It says, and their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. Now, why do I bring that up? Because I battle this, and I know there's somebody hearing me who battle this. Every time you start trying to do something for God, the devil comes in your ear. He says, who do you think you are? Do you know how many people you stole from? Do you know how many people that you cheated? And Do you know how many people you hurt with your harsh words and I won't go into it all but that's the kind of nonsense I hear after 30 some odd years of serving Jesus I still hear it every time I get ready to preach the devil says who do you think you are mm -hmm. and I remind him I'm forgiven Amen. that's all there is to it I'm forgiven and he says and I will remember their iniquities the devil remembers and remember what Jack says he's a liar Right. He comes up there trying to say, oh, God knows you. God knows your heart. God knows the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. I get so tired of hearing people say, well, just follow your heart. If you do it, you're going to crash. Amen. Right, right. That's true. God doesn't remember your sin. God doesn't remember your failures. Quit letting Satan beat you back with it. Amen. Let me get back to the text. I'm going to try to wrap this up. Remember Saul said, let no man eat until all of my battles are over and I'm victorious and all my enemies are destroyed. Now I'm fixing to make somebody mad. So many Christians think all the blessings are over there mm -hmm. when we get to heaven. Right. Oh, I thank God. We've got a promise of heaven. But you know what? I thank God for what he's given in this life. Amen. There are blessings here. There are blessings along the way. So somewhere along the line, it became the thing that if you're a Christian, you have to be poor. You have to be quiet. Come on, right? Like that's what happened. Yeah, right. <laughs> you are somebody. If you're quiet, be quiet. If you're loud, be loud. If you're a joker like me, joke. Right. If you're somebody who's into cars, listen, I have watched people minister to others through racing cars. You don't have to abandon your cars because you're a Christian now. God called you because you've got an inroads I don't have. That's Come true. on. Amen. Right. Help me, Lord God. Saul, the king. Nobody gets to eat. What's he saying? We have to suffer. Yeah. We have to deny ourselves. Now don't hear me wrong because there is a time for fasting. I believe that with all my heart. But what he was saying is maybe if we don't eat, if we show God how we're depriving ourselves, maybe he'll move. Jonathan, if I could just put it in the Garrett translation, said, Daddy's wrong. Right. The honey's here. Look at what it's done for me. And if all of you had done it, who knows what we might have accomplished for the king today. Amen. God is saying, it's time for the church to quit this false piety. Quit acting like, well, we just got to suffer for his namesake. Quit. Listen. There is a time. I'm going to make it clear. There is a time. But if it was all about suffering, who would want to be a Christian? That's right. right. I'm just telling you the way it is. I'm not trying to be harsh. It just is what it is. I grew up in a church that I watched people that I thought, if that's a Christian, I don't want it. I have to. 
Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they thought they were doing good. At 17 years old, took a girl out. First real date I ever went on in my life. We went to Pizza Hut, and then we went and watched a movie, The Shaggy Day. Can you imagine how horrible that was? I came out of that movie, and I kid you not, there was four ladies from the church leaning against my car and said, Daryl Garrett, you're going to split hell wide open. Oh, and I told them what they can do with their religion. But that's the attitude that we have conveyed to the world. Christians are just weird. They're freaks. They're, they, they're all these, we, we can't eat, enjoy. I mean, I've had people say, man, you laugh too much to be a Christian. <laughs> Let that sink in. He's given us joy. We sing songs. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. But don't laugh. Don't smile. Your face might crack. I'm not my Jonathan was saying to us, there are blessings all along the way. Do you think the honey just fell out of the tree by itself? No. God put it there to strengthen them, to encourage them, to give them strength for the battle. And there's blessings that come before the child of God all the time. And we say, oh, I don't need that. Come on. Learn to receive. People tell you, well, maybe it's just not God's will to heal you. Maybe it's just not God's will for you to be healthy. Maybe you're going to be a witness through your sickness. Let this sink in what you're saying. I love God so much that I've been sick every day for the last 20 years. Is that going to sell to somebody? No. I'm on a dirt show. Now, I'm telling you, that yes, we suffer. Then there's illnesses that come upon Christians, too, because we live in a world that is cursed by sin. Right. But don't you dare throw the blame on God. Come on. That's my God, my Father you're talking about. And I'm not going to stand by and let that happen. He never asked you to carry a cross of sickness and disease. It's not in the Word. He never asked you to do that. In fact, he paid the price by Jesus taking those stripes on his back. He took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses in his own body, is what the word says, so that we can be healed. And it's time we learn Jack's famous words. Devil, you're a liar. Right. You wake up in the morning and feel bad. Devil, you're a liar. I'm the blessed of God. He says, it's going to rain. Oh, God, help me. I'm fixing to get some hate mail now. It was raining this morning. I invited somebody to church. It's raining. Is he worthy to be praised in the rain? Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. You know what? Around these parts, we got six months of bad weather. <laughs> Does God only get six months and the rest of the time we serve self? Come on. Yeah, it, it, it costs us something to get out. I've got joints that ache in the cold weather. I'm believing God for that healing one day, but right now it hadn't happened, but I'm believing it's going to happen. But you know what? There's some days it's all I can do. Matter of fact, if the guy gets back to me, I'm going over to Peoria area, Chillicothe actually, to pick up a stool to put right here because some days my legs hurt so much I can't stand that long. But I'm not going to let that stop me. Amen. Come, somebody hear me. We have to press through and fight for those things, but I still believe. Amen. I still believe that the blessing, the healing is coming. Don't walk and live defeated. Right. If you get nothing else I say today, get these last words. Stop walking around speaking words of defeat. Amen. Anybody old enough to admit that they can remember Pebbles and Bam Bam cartoon? <laughs> oh, yeah. And there was a character on there. By the name of Bad Luck Schleprock. Wore a gray, long, I don't know what you call it, dinosaur skin, and a hat hung down over his head, and walked like this, and he would go, wowzy, wowzy, woo woo. <laughs> and I've said it many times over the years God is tired of Schleprock, Schleprock Christians. Right. Because you don't bring him glory. Come on. Well, I don't know if I can make it another day. Pray for me. The devil's been all over me. <laughs> Let that sink in. Tell him, devil. I'm tired of your nonsense. I'm tired of fighting these headaches. I've been battling that one. 
I'm tired of this. I'm speaking healing into my body in the name of Jesus. It may not have come yet, but you know what? I fully expect it. And I thank God for it before it comes. There's the key. Begin to praise him now. You need a better job, Lord? Thank you for the job I have. I thank you that it's helping me to meet the needs right now. But, Lord, I'm believing for something better. So I'm asking you and I'm standing on the promises of your word that there's a better job out there for me. And I'm ready to receive it when you're ready to give it. Amen. Whatever situation you're facing, begin to speak to it and stop. It's not a wishing well. Come on. Lord, I believe it. And I'm standing on it. I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. I want to close with this. Basic message today. If you can't remember anything else, remember this simple phrase. Believers eat honey. Amen. Believers see the blessing and they receive it. Yes. If you don't receive it, it'll just keep laying there. Mm -hmm. It'll go to somebody else. But here's the thing that most people miss. If I eat the honey, let's, let's picture ourselves as Jonathan. Jonathan is eating the honey. Nobody else has eaten it. Everybody else there is still weak, frail, and defeated. What if everybody ate the honey? Right. And I'm speaking to the church right now. What if you decided to stop walking around like a pauper and say, you know what? Jesus said I'm his joint heir. In God's eyes, when he looks at me, I'm the brother or sister to Jesus Christ. I'm a king's kid. Amen. Watch what's happening in England right now. Queen passed away. That just blows my mind out. We'll talk about that another time. But All of a sudden, everybody's talking about these other names you never hear of. And they started talking about, and this one is a niece, and she's worth $100 million. And this one is worth... This and they're going out, and I'm like, I never even knew they were there. But they're related to the queen. You're related to the king. Yes, amen. Not just yeah. the king of England or America, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And every blessing that is his, it is yours. And it's time we start acting like it. Stop walking around like we're defeated. And I'll say it again, in and of yourself, you're not worthy. I'm not worthy. None of us are. But because of what he did, we've been grafted into the vine. We've been drafted into the family. And all the riches of heaven and every promise in the book, it's yours. Amen. Father, I thank you for the privilege of standing and proclaiming your word. Father, I pray that somebody would hurt, hurt something that would begin to help them to stop and focus. And realize that, Lord, they're living so far beneath their privilege. Lord, you have blessings in store for us. You have so many things. Lord, we only think of blessings as dollars and cents. But, Lord, there's so much more that you have for us. And we're living beneath our privilege. Like that man on that cruise ship. You've paid for it all. It's ours. And it's time to eat the honey. Father, I pray for those that have been stilled by the fear the last couple of years. Lord, I don't condemn anybody and neither do you, but it's time to come out of hiding. It's time to get back into the house of God and worship you because you're worthy of all praise. I pray, Lord God, that your church would arise and this would be the finest hour for the body of Christ around the world. Lord, as crazy and mixed up as this world is getting right now, I believe that it is time for the church to shine and to show your love, your compassion, and your power to this world. Lord, I pray, let it begin right here. Let it begin in me. Let it begin in this small gathering. Let it begin with those that are hearing my voice. That people would begin to say, I am a child of the king, and I'm going to walk in the authority that has been given to me. Father, let it happen. Lord, let us not walk out of this place today and dismiss it from our minds and forget it. But, Lord, let us begin to get into the word and see what your word says about us. Lord, let nobody take my word for it. Show them in your word. Show them, Lord God, the blessings that belong to them. And then, Lord God, unlock that key in their life. 
And Lord, I give you the thanks and I give you the praise. And I pray right here in Galesburg. Lord, I'm praying for people to just come walking through the door that we don't even know how they got here. And I'm believing for souls to be saved. I'm believing for those addictions to be broken. I said it months ago. I'm going to say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree this place a cancer-free church. Amen. I believe it. I stand on it. We've already seen it unfolding. I'm believing it, Lord. This is going to be a place, Lord. I don't know why, but I believe you said it to me that cancers are going to be healed completely in this church. And I stand on it, and I give you the glory. It's got nothing to do with me. It's all about you. Lord, I'm believing that on the side of the road, addicts are going to be set free from things that have held them prisoner. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm believing for marriages that have been given up on to be restored. Yes. And Father, I give you the praise for it right now in Jesus' name. I'm believing for people that have accepted a lesser than mindset to begin to understand who they are in Christ and walk in that authority. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, let it begin today. And I give you the glory and I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me say it again because I didn't even mention this. If you... I didn't even take an offering here publicly. I did it with the church. But if you'd like to give, the information is there on the screen where you can give to the, this ministry. We appreciate it so much. I I wish, do you know how to scan that thing that I show you? Can you grab that box and drag it over and show them a piano if it'll show? We were able to buy this because of your blessings. There's people who don't even go to this church that contacted me and said, I want to be a blessing to the quest. And they are helping us and we're you don't know everything in this room the chairs everything we've done is because of people like you and we thank you so much for that but we give god the glory for it in jesus name but i want to say that if you're in the local area and you don't have a church home we want to invite you to come out and i mean this sincerely you may come and say i didn't like it that's all right <laughs> it, it you know what i've had food that other people love i didn't like it <laughs> that's good. it's all right we're not all the same. We all That's why some of us like one kind of music, some like another. Some people like a more formal setting. That's okay. But, you know, if you don't have a church home, come try it. I'm going to say something publicly that I've never said on a live stream. Don't ever go to a church one time and make a decision. That's my church. Because anybody can give you a good sandwich. Amen. <laughs> Doesn't mean they cook. That's true. that's true. You need to go check out a church two or three times. Find out what they believe in. And I mean this as sure as I'm standing here. If they're not willing to tell you this is what we believe, run. Amen. You need to know what they believe, what they stand for, and what they don't. Because if they're afraid to tell you, then they're not stable in it. Right. And I'm just saying it the way it is. You need to know that. Not every place that has church on the door in right. a true church. Amen. Right. A lot of them have become a social club. And I'm not trying to condemn, but I'm just telling you, people are being deceived. Right. The Bible tells us that if its days were not shortened, that even the very elect would be deceived. I don't want to see any one of you deceived. Amen. So go someplace, find out what they believe, and if they believe in the truth and it lines up with the Word of God, set your anchor. Amen. And I mean that sincerely. God bless you. Till next time, we love you and we'll be praying for you. Amen. My battery died literally if I hit the button. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you. Change it right now, bro. Yeah. Woo!